In this video, we'll learn how to create a restaurant or online food ordering website with WordPress. For this, we'll need a fresh new WordPress site, a suitable theme, and a food menu management plugin. You can get a fresh WordPress site from any hosting provider such as Liquid Web. We'll give the link in the description. In a few minutes, you can launch your brand new WordPress site. Then log into your WordPress dashboard by visiting its WP admin URL. And now we're logging into our WordPress dashboard to start the main part of this tutorial. Let's do it together from here. As you can see, we have logged into our WordPress dashboard. The first thing that we're going to do is take a look at our website. You can see we're using the default 2024 theme. First thing, we have to get a theme. In order to install a theme, we're going to hover our mouse over appearance, click on themes. And from here, we're going to select add new. And we're going to use the Cadence theme. You can see Cadence is over here. We're simply going to click on install. Wait for the theme to be installed. Okay, so the theme has been installed. Now I'm going to click on the activate button. And we're going to actually use a starter template from Cadence. Uh, to do that, we're going to install the AI starter templates. It's over here. All right, so the plugin has been installed. After it's installed, we have the option to activate Cadence AI starter templates or use classic starter templates. In the past, we have shown you how you can create a website using the AI starter templates. If you guys want to learn how to do that, we will link that video in the description down below. And for this video, we are going to use a classic template. So I'm going to click over here. And from here, you guys can choose your own template. You can also select which page builder you prefer. Um, currently, the block editor is selected. We want the Gutenberg. From here, we can also select free only and we can also select what type of website we want. So the food or restaurant isn't here, so I'm not going to select anything. Let's just scroll through the sites and see which one fits our scenario best. And this is a good theme. We can use this one, which is Gourmet Burger. Uh, this is another good theme, Resto. It's a restaurant-based theme. I think we're going to use this one, so let's select it. Okay, we can see the preview of the theme over here. You can see it's a beautifully designed um, website. It has a dessert section, the main course, some reviews, and a very nice footer with a map of your restaurant location. Okay, so I think this is a good theme. We can also select a color palette. We can select any color palette we want. And you can see as soon as we click on a color palette, the colors are changing immediately. So there are a lot of colors. I think we're going to choose the default one. Okay. So now let's click on the next button. And for advanced settings, we want to import the customizer settings and widgets. Okay. And we want to import the whole site. So let's click on the next button. And in this section, you will have the option to add any extra plugins you want. You can see there's Cadence Blocks and WooCommerce, which are already selected. These are selected because these are required for this theme, so you cannot deselect them. You can also install GiveWP, the Events Calendar, Solid Security, Cadence WooCommerce, Email Designer, Orderable, and Event Tickets. So we're going to currently install only these two themes. You can also install orderable from here because we are going to use orderable for this website. So let's select orderable. Now let's click on finish and launch. And yes, start import. Now let's wait for the theme to be imported. So our site installed successfully. So let's click on the see my site button. And here it is. You can see we have a good website here. There's also a make a booking button over here and there's also the menu, but the button isn't working. We'll get to this later on. Let's see the menu page. And here is the menu of the day. So here are the menu. There's the price, the chef recommended, specialties, and that's it. But all these are for aesthetics. You can see you cannot order from here. If you click over here or here, there's no way you can make an order. So we'll fix all of that with orderable. So let's get back to our dashboard. 
Now, if we click on Orderable, you can see Orderable has launched a setup wizard. It's welcoming us to the plugin. So I'm going to click on this begin button. You can also skip this uh, wizard by clicking over here. But I want to see what the setup looks like. So let's click on begin. So it's giving you the business uh, info page where you can add in your business name, address, city, country or state, postcode, and your email address. So let's actually enter a dummy address and let's get started okay so we filled up these fields with some dummy address so what you guys can do if you have a physical restaurant you can put in the address of your restaurant city country state um, postcode or zip code and add in your business email address over here um, since I don't have a restaurant, I'm going to just put in the dummy address. This will be helpful when you want to add delivery or pickup services on your website. So after this, we're going to click on the continue button. Here you can see the location info. Which services do you offer? Delivery and pickup. So I want to offer both services. And which days of the week are you open? So let's select all the days except Sunday. Next, we're going to add in our opening hours. 10 a.m. till 8 p.m. Now I'm going to click on continue. And finally, this is the final step. All done. In the message, it says, congratulations, you did it. Orderable is ready to use on your website. You have successfully completed the setup process and all that is left for you to do is create, customize your products. Okay, great. So let's click on the save and finish button. So this brings us back to our WordPress dashboard and you can see that orderable has been added over here and it's telling us to set up your locations, configure your locations, opening hour, delivery, pickup schedules and holidays. So we're going to do this later on. First, we're going to uh, skip this and you can see that we are using the free version of orderable. You can see um, the add-ons, time product, order statuses, table ordering, product labels, all these are only available in the pro version. Let's install the pro version because we want to get all these premium features, okay? So we're here in the official website of Orderable Pro. Uh, I'm going to show you the pricing. Over here you can see in the free version you can get the intuitive product layouts, zero fees, holidays, scheduling, floating cart widget, efficiently process orders and mobile first design. But in the pro, you get everything in the free, plus you get one year updates and support, product add-ons, product labels, order bumps, time slots, order flow, custom checkouts, checkout tipping, time products, custom order statuses, and so much more. You can also click on the compare all plans to compare between free and pro. So the pro is available for $149. You can also increase this slider and choose for how many sites you want uh, orderable pro so there's one site 10 sites 25 sites 50 sites 75 sites and 100 sites the 100 sites is available for 999 dollars okay so get the plan which is more suitable for you and here if we scroll down we can see all the pro features your restaurant needs you can see there's the product add-ons the order bumps time slots, order statuses, custom checkouts. So we'll check out some of these when we are building our site, okay? So after you're ready, just simply click on buy now and choose uh, your plan. So we have chosen the orderable pro annual for one site. Then enter your email address, first name, last name, country, state, zip code, VAT number. Then you can add in your card number, if you want, you can also choose PayPal. After that, you can just simply click on this agreement and buy Orderable Pro. Once the purchase is complete, log in to your Orderable account, then download the Orderable Pro plugin installer file. You'll also get the license key on your Orderable account page. Now let's visit our WordPress dashboard and install Orderable Pro. So to do that, we're going to hover mouse over plugins, click on add new plugin. From this section, we're going to click on Upload Plugin and we're going to select the Orderable Pro plugin from our computer. All right, so we have uploaded the plugin. Now let's click on Install Now button. Okay, the plugin has been installed. Now let's click on Activate Plugin. The plugin has been activated. Now, if we click on Orderable, you can see we have access to all the Pro features. So if you guys are using Orderable Pro, make sure to add in your license key um, and click on the Save Changes button to get all the latest updates. Since we're here, I'm going to paste in my license key and click on Save Changes. Okay, as you can see, our license has been activated. It's written over here. 
Okay, so after it's installed, you can see there's a tutorial over here. If you guys click over here, you can see there's a video tutorial. You can um, watch it to see how the time slots work in orderable. But we're going to come back to this later on. First, let's go to our website. And let's go to the menu page. And over here, we want to add in our own menu. So these are all dummies, but we want to add in our own menu. To do that, we're going to click on the edit page. And let's close this. And having this selected, we can expand the list view. And let's select this row and hit enter on keyboard. And from here, we're going to add in a block. So let's click on this plus icon and let's type in orderable. You can see orderable has added Gutenberg blocks, the product layout, open hours, mini locator, postcode locator and location picker. So currently we want the product layout. If we select it, you can see that this layout is selected and it's bringing in all of our menus. You can see over here. From here we can choose different layouts, but currently we have only the default layout. We're going to customize everything. Okay, don't worry. Since we have this section, we don't need uh, this section anymore. So let's uh, select it and then click on these three dots over here and delete it. Okay, now you can see we have only the orderable product layout. All right, after this, we're going to update. You can see all these products are already added. These are through the Cadence theme. So we're using the Resto starter template. These food products were added by the starter template. But I'm going to show you how you can create your own food product. So um, having this saved, let's go back to our dashboard. And from here, you can see we have WooCommerce installed. So let's click on products. And these are all our products. If you guys are using a different theme, you might not see any of these items. That's okay. You can simply click on this add new button to add in your own food item. So let's go ahead and do that. We're going to click on the add new button. And over here, we want to add in our food item. For that, we are going to first name our product. So let's give a name to our product. All right, so this is the name of our product. Next, we can add in a product description over here, like so. And from here, we can set a product image. If you guys have a nice image for your food item, you can select it from here. So I'm going to click on set product image and you can upload the file from here. Just click on the select file button and you can upload your food item image. But we're going to go to the media library and select an existing image. So we have selected this image. You can even add a product gallery. So if you have multiple images of the food item, you can add it from here. But since I don't have those, I'm not going to add it. Next, you can also choose a category for your food item. So currently we have only uncategorized and dish so we can add in a new category by clicking over here add new category so we're going to type a name of our category so here's our category we are going to hit enter on keyboard and it's been added here you can also add in a parent category if you wish following the same process i'm going to add a few more categories okay so i added three of these categories now i'm going to deselect these two and have only the salad selected okay Next, you can also add a product short description over here, but I'm not going to do that. The next important thing that we're going to do is set a price of our food item. So here in the product data, you can add in the regular price and the sale price. So let's add in the price of this product is $14.99. If you guys want to provide a discount for this product, you can add in a sale price as well. Say for today, it's going to be 10.99 okay so we have a sale price and like this you can add in your food product and add in a price next a special thing about orderable is you can add in nutritional info and allergens so let's first click on the nutritional info here you can see there is a section where you can mention the serving size calories serving per container um, total fat saturated fat trans fat cholesterol, sodium, carbohydrate, dietary fiber, total sugars, added sugars, protein, vitamins. So you can add all of these values over here. Basically, this gives you a section where you can add the nutritional value of your food product. 
Since we're already here, let's insert some dummy values and see how this works. Okay, so we added in the nutritional value. Now let's click on the save nutritional info. All right, next we can also add in allergens. If your customers have allergies to some of these contents, you can uh, mention these over here contains uh, whatever this contains, may contain, may contain via shared equipment, etc. So there are options to do that as well. So after that, you can simply click on publish. Okay, so our product has been published. Now let's click on this all products. And now you can see that our food item has been added over here. So using this method, you can add as many food items as you want and create your menu that way. So creating a new food item will take a lot of time. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to edit all of these existing food items and assign a category to those. And I'll get back to you after I'm done. As you can see, we updated the categories. So we have salads, desserts, fish and meats. Okay, so now what we have to do is choose how we want to display our menu item. To do that, we're going to hover our mouse over orderable and click on product layouts. From this section, you can see we have no product layouts. We're simply going to click on this add new button and add a new layout. We're going to create a product layout for these three categories, desserts, fish and meat and salads. So first, let's select the desserts. Uh, we want to choose the grid style. If you want, you can sort it uh, name, latest, price, low to high, price, high to low, but we don't want any of that. Allow sorting on front end, uh, sections. So we can also have a layout preview over here. Currently, it's looking like this. I actually want the image to appear, so I'm going to enable this. Okay, so this is how it's going to look. Um, the quantity roller, we can also include that and also the clickable card. So currently, if I uh, hover my mouse over this image, I don't see any uh, change. But if I enable this add to cart, you can see we can now click on these cards. OK, so we're going to have that enabled. Labels, choose the position of product labels. We can choose over the image. So there are a lot of options before the title, before description. I don't want any labels right now, so let's disable that. And after we're done, we can simply publish this. We haven't actually named our product layout. So let's go ahead and name it and then update. All right, let's update it. Now we're going to click on add new and we are going to add a title and we're going to choose the uh, category, grid style, images and clickable cart. Okay, let's publish. And there's one more category we need to create, and that is the salads. Images. Okay, so I'm going to publish. Now let's uh, click on product layout. So we have three product layouts, and we also have their short codes. So you can add these short codes in any section of your website, and you're going to see that. Okay, so we're going to see both ways how you can use short codes and also use the Gutenberg block to add these product layout. First, let's copy this short code. Now let's go back to our website. And now let's go to menu. And we're going to edit this page. So from here, we already added the block. So I'm going to remove this block. And I'm going to enter a new block and to add in a new block, we can simply select this entire block and hit enter on keyboard. So this is going to give us a new line here. We can click on this plus icon or over here to add in any Gutenberg block. So we're going to search for the short code block. Here it is. So let's bring it out and now let's paste in our short code. Okay. So now let's update our page and now let's view the page. And you can see we have our menu over here. So that is how you can use short codes to add your menu anywhere on your page. But I think it is better to use the orderable product layout block. So let's click on edit page again. And let's remove this section. And again, we're going to select this entire section and hit enter on keyboard. And from here, we're going to select the orderable product layout. And from here in the layout section, we can now select which we want. So for the first section, we're going to select the fish and meat. And you can see we have the fish and meat menu over here. And this text we are going to change to fish and meat. And I think it's better if we 
place this in another section and then increase the margin from both sides okay it's taking too much space so let's actually remove this for now and let's select this entire space and hit enter and now let's take a section okay and within this section we are going to add in the orderable product layout okay now we're going to select this layout go to block and select the fish and meat okay and we're going to also open up the list view select this section and from here we are going to um, go to advanced click over here and add in some margin let's say 30 pixels from the right and 30 pixels from the left okay so let's update this page and now let's view it okay it's looking much better so using the same method we can add in more items so let's go ahead and do that and let's delete this section we don't need this let's bring up the list view and let's remove it okay and now we're going to add in another section so let's remove uh, this one so let's remove this entire section okay so we have removed it now we're going to click over here add in a product layout okay so here we are also going to choose this block over here and then we're going to choose the salads layout we're also going to add the salads heading over here and now let's update and using this same method we can also create another section so let's actually copy this section and let's paste it over here okay and we're going to name it desserts and we can also create it from scratch or we can also copy this section so let's copy it and let's go over here hit enter on keyboard and now let's paste it okay so from this uh, section we can uh, select this block and then choose desserts okay now let's update this page and now let's view it now it's looking a lot better but this section is a lot better than the other two sections you can see these are way too big and I think we need to solve this so let's solve these two sections the desserts and the fish and meat okay so we're going to click on edit page and you can see the salad section it's taking uh, 1140 uh, max width we're going to set this same max width for um, these sections as well so let's bring up the list view um, and grab this section and from max width we're going to set it to 1140 let's update the page and also we're going to remove this margin that we added let's just click over here and update and we're going to do the same for this section as well so this is the section we're going to choose content max width update all right now let's view the page Although this section it's aligned over here, we also need to fix this. Let's click on edit again. Okay, I found out the problem. We are actually using a um, section over here, but in these sections we have a row layout. So um, let's actually change this. First, we're going to remove this section. And over here we are going to um, select this section, hit enter on keyboard, and we are going to add in a row layout. It's going to be one row layout here we're going to add product layout and having this selected we're going to choose fish and meat and then we're going to select um, this row layout and from here we're going to set it to 1140 let's update and now let's see the change okay so now it's looking uh, a lot better so that is how you can create a product layout menu using orderable okay so we set up the product layout page we have a menu for our restaurant website now actually let's add in the pickup and delivery options okay so to do that we're going to go back to our dashboard then we're going to hover mouse over orderable and click on settings 
From here, you have to ensure that you have uh, added all your opening hours. So you can actually select which days your restaurant or food business is open. You can also choose the hours, the active hours or the business hours for each day. You can also uh, include the max orders for each day. Okay. You can also add in holidays. So from when to when the holiday will exist. And if you are providing any services for that holiday, and you can also choose the repeat yearly. So each year that holiday will be repeated and you can add as many holidays as you want. Okay. So I'm going to remove this. And in the location picker, you can uh, see there's another option that says require a location to be selected before shopping. If you enable this option, what will happen when your customers arrive on your website? They have to select their locations. You can have this option enabled if you want. So let's enable it and see what it does. You can also choose the pop up location selector. Um, we can choose it for specific pages. So let's add the menu page. Okay. So for this page, the location selector pop up will appear. So now let's save the changes. With that out of the way, we can now enable the delivery and pickup features. So we're going to click on locations over here from orderable. And here you can see we already have a main location selected. So we have this main location. You can add as many locations as you want, but I'm going to show you how you can customize this. So first we're going to click on edit. And this is location of our restaurant. Of course, this is a dummy address. You can add in your own location address. And from here, you can uh, override default open hours. You can also uh, specify the opening hours over here. And the thing that you must do is enable this delivery services. So the services that you want to do is delivery and pickup. Okay, so these two services will be there. We can also add service hours. So if I click over here, you can see there's another service hour over here. But only one is sufficient for our purpose. We're going to remove this one. And delivery zones, we can also use the existing zones or we can add a new delivery zone. So if I click over here, you can see we can add the uh, postcode or zip codes for our delivery zones. And we can also name the area. So let's go ahead and add a delivery zone. Okay, so this is just a dummy one that we created. So we're going to add um, delivery zone. So let's create a few more of these. Okay, so let's click over here. Okay, so we added three of these areas. We're going to be providing delivery for these three locations. And for pickup, you can click over here and you can add in pickup and select the days in which you will be providing the pickup services and the period, let's say all day. You can also put a time slot when you're going to be uh, providing the pickup services but we're going to click on all day all right you can also add uh, more pickup days but we don't want that all right so let's proceed to the next step okay after this in the order options you can see there's a feature that says as soon as possible allow customers to request delivery asap so if you want you can add this feature where your customer needs a delivery as soon as possible. So if you want this feature, you can uh, enable it on delivery date, on delivery time, okay? And you can also um, add in the lead time. How long do you need to prepare the order? Um, leave zero for the same day. So we're going to put it zero. Pre-order days, how many days do you want to offer delivery pickup? So we're going to put it zero for same day, okay? And delivery days calculation method, all days, service hours, open days. So you can calculate lead time and pre-order days based on all days of the week, open days, service days, or weekdays. You can also see the documentation to know how this works. Okay, so after this, we are already done. We can just update it. And now let's see if this works. So let's get back to our restaurant and let's order something. And as soon as we came to the menu page, you can see a pop up appears, which is telling us to pick our location or find the nearest location. So we can add in a zip code and we entered a zip code and it's also showing us the location where we can have our food delivered. OK, so we're going to choose the delivery. And pickup is not available for that location. All right. So we have selected our location and now let's order something. So. Um, let's order this Bristol plate. So let's click on add. It's added over here. You can see, and let's add another, the salad bowl. Okay. Now, uh, let's click on this mini cart over here. And these are our orders. Now let's close it up and we can also access the cart from over here. 
And here's our order. We can view the cart or check out. Let's view the cart. Okay, so this is our cart. You can see we uh, we have the option to choose delivery or pickup. So if your customers want to pick up the food, they can select this option. If they want it delivered, there's a special charge. As you can see, as I select pickup and delivery, the total is changing. So if I choose the delivery, $4.99 will be added. You can see. So the delivery and pickup option is working perfectly. Okay, you can also change the address if you want. So if we click on proceed to checkout, I think we don't have the checkout page. So let's go ahead and create the checkout page. Let's go to dashboard and let's go to pages. And here's our checkout page. So let's view. Okay, so this is not the checkout page. So we have to create it uh, manually. Okay, so let's go back to our dashboard and let's go to pages again. And we're going to create our own checkout page. So from here, we're going to click on add new page. And let's write checkout. Okay, and here we are going to add in a block, which is the checkout. Here it is. So let's publish it. And now let's go back. And we need to choose our page as the default checkout page. Okay, so um, let's delete this page. And now let's go to WooCommerce. Okay, after you get that out of the way uh, from WooCommerce, click on Advanced. And here is the checkout page. We're going to click over here and add in our checkout page. Okay, here it is. So let's save changes. While we're here, let's also discuss the payment gateway method. So if we click on WooCommerce once again, it's going to bring us to this setup page. From here, we already added our product. We already have a theme. Now we need to set up a payment. So if you want to set up payment, you can click over here. Let's close this. And here you can set up your payment. So there are a couple of methods of payment. So the first method is the Woo payments. So if you want, you can set up Woo payments and you can get paid through WooCommerce. And WooPayments is also pre-integrated with popular payment options such as Visa, MasterCard, American Express, and much more. There are other payment uh, providers such as Stripe, PayPal, or you can use direct bank transfer or cash on delivery. You can enable this so the cash on delivery will be available. If you want to set up Stripe or direct bank transfer, you can just simply click on Get Started. So I clicked on Get Started on Stripe, so it's installing Stripe right now. Stripe has been installed and now we have to configure it. So uh, to configure your Stripe, you have to go to your Stripe account. And if you don't have one, you can create one just by clicking over here. Once you have your Stripe account, uh, use the live publishable key and the live secret key over here, then click on the continue button and you'll be easily able to set up Stripe for your website. Now, if you want to set up direct bank transfer, so let's click on setup over here and if you want to use the direct bank transfer you can simply click on get started over here you can add in your account name account number bank name sort code ibn and pic or swift code then click on save and the bank transfer will be available for your website as well okay so now let's get back and see if our checkout page is working we can see the checkout page is over here so if we click on view so this is our checkout page. So now let's get back to our dashboard and let's view our site. And we already have these food items added. We are going to click on the checkout button. And here is our checkout page. You can see you have the ability to add in your shipping address, local pickup, flat rate. So all these options are over here. And finally, we can check out. So we haven't actually customized our WooCommerce payment method. So if you customize the payment method, um, all these will be much more easier to do. So our food uh, pickup and delivery option is working perfectly. So let's uh, cut all of these out. Okay. And now let's go back to home. 
So our restaurant website is created. We created our food menu. We created delivery and pickup options. Now we can uh, work on a few more extra things. So let's see how you can set up tipping system. So if we go back to our dashboard and click on orderable settings, you can see there's a tip settings over here. If you want, you can add a feature where your customers can leave a tip through your website. To do that, we can simply enable this option. And over here, we can see there's tip options. So label, let's add $5. And amount will be 5. And you can put a percentage or fixed. I'm going to put fixed and let's add another option. dollars and let's add in another okay so uh, the default option is no tip okay and the no tip label will be no tip enable custom tip you can add that so uh, your customers can leave a custom tip okay so after that we can save changes okay and after that we're going to go to the checkout settings and here we are going to enable custom checkout Okay, so let's enable this and now let's save all our changes. You can also show your logo or upload your logo in the checkout page, but we're not going to do that right now. Let's see if the tipping feature is working. So let's visit our site and let's go to menus. Oh, we already have a food item placed on our cart. So let's click on view cart. Okay, so local pickup and now let's proceed to checkout. And here is the tip option. You can see that your customers can select $5, $10, $15, no tip, or they can even select custom tip and select the amount of tip they want to provide. Okay, so the uh, tip is working perfectly. Now let's go back to our dashboard and let's set up an interesting feature. So you might have a special menu or special food item of the day. How you can set that up, uh, orderable actually provides you with that feature as well. So if I click on orderable, you can see there's a feature called timed products. If I click over here, um, there's no food item added. So let's click on add new and here add new time product rule. So let's say you are uh, providing a special food which is available only a specific time during the day. So how you can do that, let's see. We are going to add a title of our time product rule and from actions, we're going to set to visible and for time product rules, we're going to add uh, our first rule on date, before date, after date, date range, day of the week and time range. If your food product is available only um, at a special date, you can select this one. If your food is only available on a special day, for example, Friday or Sunday, you can select that or during a specific time range, you can also select that. Let's actually select uh, the day of the week. OK, so let's go ahead and select it and here we're going to choose uh, Wednesday today's Wednesday okay so after it's selected we can add in more time if we want but it's okay and here we can add in our first condition so um, the rules is product or product category is equals to we can search for a product so this our Italian mushroom let's select this product okay now let's publish it and this food item will only be visible during this time of the day. Okay, so if we visit our site, we can see that this is added over here. Let's get back to the dashboard and let's see what happens if we set it to uh, hidden. So for time products, if we go over here, special of the day. So if we select another day, for example, Thursday, let's update our page. Okay, now let's go to our website and look at our menu. And you can see that the Italian mushroom food item has disappeared from here. That is because we selected Thursday and since today is Wednesday, it's not going to appear. But tomorrow it's going to appear. Okay, so that is how you can actually use the timed uh, products feature to offer special food item to your customers. Okay, so let's update our page. And let's check out another feature. 
Now there's a special thing that you can do. We are going to choose the product label feature as well. Since we're talking about special of the day, let's actually discuss the product labels. You can add product labels to your products. So if you want, you can add this special of the day label to your food item as well. To do that, first we're going to choose product labels and we're going to create a product label. So we wrote special of the day and it's added over here. So let's select a color. Okay, and we can also add in a description and we can also display the name, icon, icon name, name and icon, whatever. All right, so let's add new product label and it's added over here. Now what we have to do is go to products and over here we're going to click on edit. And after this we're going to scroll down and over here product label we're going to choose special. Special of the day and we're going to click on add. So special of the day has been added. Now let's update our page. And now let's go to orderable product layouts. We're here in this page and now let's go to salads. And over here, we're going to um, see the label option. Here we can choose over the image, before title, before description, before price. So if we choose over the image, the label is going to show up over here. You can choose uh, top center, top right any location you want okay so we're going to choose the top left okay and now we're going to update our page and now let's view our site let's go to menu and over here you can see special of the day so using this timed product feature and the label you can add special menu items like this you can also use the label for these food items as well it's not necessary that you have to use it for timed products only okay so let's get back to the dashboard. So we've seen features such as the delivery and pickup, the tip settings, the timed products, product labels. There are a lot more you can do with orderable. Let's uh, see the table ordering. So if you want your clients or your customers to order by scanning QR code, you can easily do that with orderable. So from orderable, just click on table ordering. And here you can see the list is empty. We can click on add new. And here we can add in our table details. So let's say table one. Okay, you can also add a table ID over here. So it says enter an ID for this table. One will be automatically generated if left blank. So if I don't enter any ID, it will be automatically generated. So let me just say one. Okay, it's table one. And you can see there's a section over here that says QR code. As soon as I hit publish, it's going to generate a QR code for my table. And here is also the URL. So if I read here, you can see it says enter a URL for where the QR code should direct your customers to. The table number will be added and tracked automatically. How amazing. So let's publish. And you can see our QR code has been added. What you can do is you can download this QR code and place it on the relevant uh, table or the table number one. And your customers can come into your restaurant, scan this QR code, and they will be directed to the URL, this URL. We are using a local host site. That's why it's showing this URL. What you should do is copy the URL of your website or your menu page and paste it over here. And then customers will be directed to your website or your menu page. From that section, your customers can order for food and your waiters or servers can actually see which table has ordered the food. Okay, so this is an amazing feature. All right, since we have created our menu and delivery systems and all other features that we wanted, now let's do some designing. I'm not going to show you how to design each and every section because we have done this in some of our previous tutorials. We will link those video down in this video's description so you can check that out and learn the step-by-step -step process. But I'm going to show you just a little bit of things such as how you can change the background image, how you can link buttons, how you can change these texts and all that stuff. First, we want to edit some of the things in this page. To do that, we are going to simply click on edit. And while we're here, we can edit the elements of this website. For example, if we want to edit the background image, we can simply select it. And over here, if we go to styles, here you can see in the background image section, we can change our image. If we want to change the image, we can simply click on edit image 
and select any image that we want okay so if you want your own image you can go to upload files and select that file from your computer or you can go to pexels and type in the image that you want for example if I search for restaurant and let's click on search you can see we have some restaurant themed images for example this is an image that I like I can simply click on download and this image is downloaded now we can click on select and this image will be used as our background image cadence gives you this ability to download and use images from pexels directly so this is a great feature so I'm going to change the image back to our original image so let's scroll down and I believe this was the original image I'm going to select it so that goes for the image now if you want to change or edit any of these texts you can easily do that for example I want to uh, edit this text I can simply click over here and write whatever I want okay and we can also change the heading to h2 to make it even bolder or larger I can also change the text alignment to wherever I want and also uh, change the styles okay you can also edit these texts as well and we also have a button over here you can see that if I select it you can see there's some options given over here where you can edit your button you can edit the style of the button also you can add in the link of the page where this button will direct the users to when they click on it so let's paste in the URL of our menu page okay this is the link of our menu page and here it is next we are also going to scroll down over here here there's a section um, that says breakfast lunch and dinner so a time is given 7 30 to 9 a.m. lunch is from 12 a.m. to 2 30 and dinner from 6 p.m. to 10 30 p.m. so if you want you can also edit this text for example I want the breakfast to be up to 11 a.m. and from for lunch I want to select 1 p.m. to let's say 4 30 p.m. okay so that's how you can also edit the texts next you can also see there's a button that says make a booking so if you want your customers to make a booking to your site you can also add a page and add in the link of that page here so we already have a contact page so let's add the URL of that contact page with this button so I'm going to paste in the URL over here okay then I'm going to hit enter all right that's it now I'm going to update the page so the changes will be saved and now let's view our page okay now if I click on this button it's going to direct me to my menu page again if I click on this make a booking button it's going to direct me to my contact page now we have several pages that I haven't explored some of those pages we've already looked at the home page the menu page now let's take a look at the reviews page over here you can see uh, a section that says what do clients say about us so here you can add in uh, some of your company details and also you can ask some of your customers to leave some reviews and you can add in their photograph and their reviews over here to change all of this you can simply click on edit page again like you did before you can edit these texts over here here add in images for these sections so after you select this section you can add in some text next by clicking over here you can add in an image of your client or customer and you can also add in their name okay then you can update the page and it will be saved so that goes for the reviews page now if we go to the blog page here you can see this is a collection of all the posts now this page is not 100 percent necessary for a restaurant website but you can have this included if you want to make some posts this might be good for your marketing so if we look at some of these posts over here you can see secret of making a smoked pork the coffees the future of work amazing dining experience begins 40 truly amazing blueberry recipes you can see some of these posts will attract the attention of your customers and will make your restaurant a lot popular if I click on any of these posts let's see if I click on read more you can see it has a beautiful background image and the texts are over here with some more images and there are some tags over here as well so I'm also going to show you how you can remove the blog page if you want or you can also 
keep this blog page and make posts daily. Let's go ahead and go back to our dashboard and let's see how you can make a post or publish a post. So I'm back here in my dashboard. From here, if I click on posts, here you can see all the posts are over here. So if you want to add a new post, what you can do is click on add new post. You can add a title to your post. Then you can add in your texts. You can also add in images just by clicking over here and type in image. And here will be the image block. Then you can add in some image and you can also add texts. If you want to add a featured image, simply just uh, go to the post and over here, there's the featured image section. And from this section, you can click over here and set a featured image for your post. So that is how you can make posts. And after you're done, you can simply click on the publish button to publish your post. Now, I don't want to make any posts, so I'm not going to save this. I'm simply going to go back to my dashboard. So that is how you can make a uh, post. You can see the post that I created, it's drafted over here. So I'm going to remove it. Next, if you want, you can also remove this blog page over here. You can simply remove it from here. Okay. And if you want to create a new blog page of your own design, you can click add new page over here, then go to settings and go to reading and select the post page. So from here, you can select uh, which is your post page. So it's currently the blog is selected. That is the default post page and then click on the save changes button. Okay, so that goes for the blog page. So let's visit our website again. And here, if we hover our mouse over pages, we can see there are three more pages. So let's take a quick look at it. Services. So this is the services section. You can see this is also a beautifully designed page. You can also edit this by clicking on this edit page. And here you can change in the text. You can also there, see there's a button over here. Let's paste in the URL to our menu page. Okay, then let's hit enter and we have added the link to our menu page so people can order from here. Enjoy every moment. So here you can also add in a video if you want and you can customize these texts, images. You already know how to do everything. So if you want to add new images over here, simply click on this pencil icon and you can add your image. So let's go to gallery and here you can choose the image you want and it will be added over here. So it's really easy to customize. All right, so let's go back. So this is the services page. Now let's see the about us page. Here you can see there's the about us section. Here's some images, some more texts. You know already how you can customize this. Just simply click on edit page like so. And here you can um, add in your own image. Just click on the pencil icon and add in your own image. You can change this image and put in your own image. You can also add in how many customers you have served, how many years of experience you have, happy customers, how many dishes you have served, how many awards you have gotten. If you don't want to show a certain number, you can simply grab it and click on these three dots and delete it. But I want this uh, section to show up, so I'm going to undo this. And you can also customize these sections as well. And this button you can add in our services uh, page. So let's add in that link. And you can see that it's already recommending us the page. So I'm going to select it. Okay, so we've added that to our buttons. Make sure all your buttons have the link. All right, so no button should have broken links. You can also change in the images. Okay, now let's preview. And there's the FAQ page. You can see how to become a VIP customer in our restaurant. Is it possible to request personalized dishes and much more. Now, if you want, you can also remove and add more questions. So let's see how you can do that. Let's edit page. And here are the FAQs. For example, I want to remove this particular questions. Um, how can I give my clothes for speed laundry service? So this is not relevant. I want to remove it. I can simply select it and click on delete. Also, I can delete this and delete this. And if you want to add in another question, what you can do is bring up the list view and select this accordion. And here you can add accordion item like so. Then you can add in your question. Okay, so I've added the questions and here I can add in my answer like that. And then we're going to update the page and let's view this page now. You can see we have the FAQ over here.
So that is how this FAQ section works. So if you want to remove a certain page or certain section from your menu, you can also do that. So let's go back to our dashboard and let's go to appearance and click on menus. And from here, we can choose which menu we want. So currently we are seeing the footer navigation. Let's click on the menu primary and let's click on select. So here is the menu that we are seeing on our header. Suppose we want to remove the FAQ page. So we can simply click over here and remove. In similar fashion, you can remove other pages as well. You can remove the blog page if you want. You can remove the pages. You can also see that the services and about us is a sub item of this page. You can remove this by simply dragging and dropping it over here and over here. And you can see that these are no longer the sub items of pages. But let's actually keep the original design and save it as it is. Okay. And let's save the menu. And now let's view our site. And now you can see we do not have the FAQ page anymore. Finally, let's check the contact page. Over here, if we click on the edit page section, you can see we have a form over here and we also have a map. Cadence uses its own form building uh, block. To use this, you can simply select this block. And over here, you can already see there are ways of adding in fields and customizing them. For example, the first name field, if we click over here, you can see its field type is text. We can also see if it's required or not. You can also see uh, if the show label is on or not, the placeholder, input, default, help text, and so much more options. If you want to edit any one of these options, for example, I want to remove this last name, what I can simply do is um, click over here and see if there's any uh, option to change it. So there's no option to change it. So we can grab it and click on this close button and it's closed. Now for this field, it's taking 50% of width. I want to make it full width. Make its width to 100%. Okay, so that is how you can edit the form field as well. Now, if you want to add in your own field, what you can simply do is let's fold this up. And from here, we can click on add new field. You can see it's field five settings. So if I expand this, I can edit this field my own way. So I can add in the field label. I can add in a placeholder. For example, I want to add your order. You can see the placeholder is saying your order. And in the field label, I'm going to change it to your order as well. And then I'm going to hide this label. Now you can see there's another section over here. We can also move it up. See? It's working really nicely. Now you can see the your order settings is over here. Now if you want, you can make this field required. If I enable this, this will be required, but we are not seeing the red asterisk over here. We can simply show label and see there's the red asterisk over here. So if I disable this, it goes away. And if I enable the required, it comes back. Okay, so I'm going to delete this uh, field because I don't want it. So that is how you can customize your own form. Finally, if we take a look at the submit form button, we can also check out how this works because you want your form to be working. So in the actions after submit, if I expand this here, email is selected. So after this form is submitted, it's going to be emailed to one of our addresses. So I'm going to take a look at it in a moment. Before that, I want to um, take a look at these options. Here you can see there are other options such as redirect, mailer light, fluent CRM and other pro add ons. You can also enable these add-ons if you wish. Okay. If I enable this, this redirect settings will be over here where you can paste in the URL where these will be redirected to. Okay. And if I enable the mailer light, you can see the mailer light settings is over here where you can put in the API key and start working with mailer light. And there are other pro add-ons such as autorespond email, database entry, Brevo, MailChimp and webhook. If you have the pro add-ons, you can use these as well. Okay, so that goes for the actions after submit in the email settings. And you can type in the email address of where you want this email to be sent to the email subject from from name, reply to CC, BCC and all those stuff. You can also add in Google reCAPTCHA if you want. So if I enable this Google reCAPTCHA, you can select the V3 or V2 you can enable Google reCAPTCHA for your form as well. So the final thing that I want to say is the map over here. 
Now you can also add in the location of your restaurant to this map. To do that, simply hover your mouse over here and you can see there's an option that says click here to select the block. So I'm going to select it and let's expand this. And over here you can see there's an option to add in the location. Okay, and you can also zoom in or zoom out. So let's zoom in. Okay, now you can add in your own address. Currently the Golden Gate Bridge is selected. Um, you can add any location. For example, I have searched for Greenwich Village. You can see it actually finds out where your location is and it marks it on the map. You can also add in a filter. For example, here's the map filter. You can select saturated, you can select sepia or any style you want. Currently, I'm going to select the none. And here is the API settings. And you can see this block includes an API key, but a custom key can be used. A custom key is required to use the JavaScript API. How to create an API? They have already provided a link. You can read this documentation to learn how you can get the API. Okay. And to get the best experience, you have to actually create the API for your Google Maps. Okay. So that does it for this tutorial. I think we have enough. After you're done, you can click on update page to update all your changes. That brings us to the end of this tutorial. We have seen some of the amazing features that Orderable provides you with. We have used a beautiful template from Cadence to build this site. We have added in our menu items. We have added some special timed product. We also have added the tipping features and the delivery and pickup locations. So we hope that this video was helpful for you guys. If you found this video helpful, make sure to like this video and subscribe to our channel for more helpful videos on WordPress. So thank you for watching and see you in the next video.